Roswell Flight Test Crew here at AMA 2016. Be sure to click subscribe to keep up with our updates from the show. And right now I'm talking to Mark Hoot Gibson from the FAA. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Great. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Now, could you begin by describing your position at the FAA? Because it is a new role, right? It is a new position and, and a new role. Uh, my title is the Senior Advisor to the Deputy Administrator for UAS. And much of what I do is to working the hill, working closely with industry, working with associations like AMA here today to engage, to listen, and to bring their concerns back and uh, roll them into our future. All right, thank you. Now, the first question I've got, and this is vexing a lot of people in our audience, is to understand the FAA's position on FPV, first person view flying, because the special interpretive rule like dropped an atom bomb on that and caused an enormous amount of upset in the community, but then the, I guess what will become the part 107 regulations seem to take a more permissive view. So sort of where is the FAA on the issue of FPV? It's a wonderful capability, but uh, as we used to say, my line of work, you're still kind of looking through a soda straw. So your ability to maintain situation awareness uh, around the vehicle uh, is, is constrained. And so uh, we're still in the visual observer business because uh, it provides coverage of your general flight path and operating area as opposed to FPV, which because it's very limited in its, its scope, uh, can't provide that to the operator. So are we um, going to be able to operate FPV with a spotter to maintain that broader situational awareness? Uh, yes. Uh, we'll get you a final uh, a word on that, and we know the final uh, uh, 107 rule will be out in late, uh, late spring. But uh, I think that's the current intention is to pursue that uh, so that FPV will be permitted, but you have to have a visual observer uh, on hand to clear the flight path in the flight area. Okay, well, that's the way we've been doing it for years, and that's the way the AMA says to do it. So I don't think any legitimate operator is going to be unhappy with that. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> we will, we will. Oh, and if you could talk about, because there's, there's some confusion on this issue, uh, which is to say recognizing the AMA, the Academy of Metal Aeronautics, as a official community-based organization as defined by law. And I understand the FAA recognizes that, but can't or hasn't done it officially. So sort of what's the state of play there, just so people understand? Well, I, think, uh, I think it's certainly part of our lexicon uh, when we refer to a community-based operation and your safety guidelines. It's AMA uh, currently. We know there's other organizations similar out there. But we currently don't have, uh, that I'm aware of anyway, any specific criteria or processes that a group could come to us and get that designation. We're using you out of, out of habit, I guess, of the decades that you've been at this to uh, hold you up as an example. And so, uh, but as we, as we proceed down track here into the future, I think uh, that'll be something that we'll have to address because, uh, you know, everybody's going to want to hold up their hand and say, I'm a community-based operation, end of story. And we're going to have to find a way to maybe formalize that. And then the last question I had is, obviously, this registration system, you know, the thing which gets cited over and over again are these, you know, situations with drones being spotted near airports, etc. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm a drone pilot. That's what's pulled me into this. But there are a lot of guys here who've been flying these, you know, fixed wing, more of a traditional model aircraft for 40 years, completely without incident, who I think they feel they're being unfairly put upon and sort of lumped together with us drone guys. What would you say to somebody who's been flying safely for 40 years, never, only ever flies at an field, but now suddenly has to do this registration? Well, I would say, first of all, thank you for uh, uh, being conscious uh, and an a, uh, accomplished operator out there and a safe operator out there. AMA, I, I know having spent time here today with you all, uh, feels a little singled out. I think what we're trying to do is bring you on board and into the tent, if you will, to be that example. As we mentioned, the community, the current and quadcopters, an innovative, almost IT-based uh, uh, new aircraft that are entering our NAS. Um, I think, uh, you know, frankly, they, they, they don't have the traditions of aviation that you all have established and, and maintain of accountability and certification and safety. And so uh, we're hoping to, that you join with us and help pull the, those folks that probably would very, be very happy to comply with all the rules and certainly don't want to be responsible for a, a serious catastrophe out there in the NAS, that uh, you all would join us in that effort to educate them and make, make operations safer for all of us. All right. 
Well, Mark Gibson, thank you so much for talking with us. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for your time today and a chance to, chance to address the organization. And by the way, I just wanted to say, Mark just got off stage where he, for about an hour and 10 minutes, was questioned by a whole pack of AMA members and, and, and bore it brilliantly, I must say. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, well, I've got combat, uh, plenty of combat time. This, uh, this wasn't that big a deal. But I, I appreciate the opportunity to engage with you all. From AMA 2016, this is the Roswell Flight Desk Crew signing off. Thank <laughs> you.